This is from our FOSS Water and Climate Unit, pages 20 through 23. Celsius and Fahrenheit. Celsius and Fahrenheit are two scales used to measure temperature. Both scales are based on the freezing point and boiling point of pure water at sea level. The Celsius scale has 100 degrees between the two points. The Fahrenheit scale has 180 degrees between the freezing point and boiling point. Today, most countries use the Celsius scale to measure temperatures. The United States, however, still uses the Fahrenheit scale. Anders Celsius. The Celsius scale is named for Anders Celsius, a Swedish astronomer. Celsius lived from 1701 to 1744. In 1742, he created a temperature scale. The scale used 0 degrees Celsius to mark water's boiling point and 100 degrees Celsius to mark water's to mark its freezing point. A few years later, another scientist changed Celsius scale so that zero degrees Celsius was the freezing temperature and 100 degrees Celsius was the boiling temperature. Celsius scale was originally called the centigrade scale. It was renamed in the 1940s to honor the inventor. Daniel G. Fahrenheit. The Fahrenheit scale is named for German scientist Daniel G. Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit lived from 1686 to 1736. In 1714, he invented the first mercury thermometer. He invented a temperature scale to go along with it. Fahrenheit's thermometer marked normal human body temperature at 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit thought that he had found the lowest possible temperature by mixing ice and salt. He set the temperature of this mixture at 0 degrees Fahrenheit. Then he set the freezing point of water at 32 degrees Fahrenheit. He also set the boiling point of water at 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Water, hot and cold. When things get hot, something interesting happens. They get bigger. Usually you can't see that hot material is bigger. The change is small. But one place you can see that hot material is bigger is in the bulb thermometer. A bulb thermometer is a small container of liquid attached to a thin tube. The small container is the bulb. The thin tube is the stem. When the bulb gets hot, the liquid expands or gets larger. Liquid pushes farther up the stem. When the bulb gets cold, the liquid contracts or gets smaller. Liquid pulls back into the bulb. How does that happen? It happens at a level that is invisible to our eyes. This is what scientists have figured out. Water is made of tiny particles that are much too small to see. The particles are moving around all the time. They move faster when the water is hot and slower when the water is cold. Think about a pan of water. All the water particles bang into one another all the time. That keeps a little space between the particles. When the water is hot, the particles bang into one another harder. Harder banging pushes the particles a little farther apart. When the particles are farther apart, the volume of water in the pan increases. Increased volume is expansion. Now, can you explain what happens to the liquid in a bulb thermometer? Float and sink. Imagine that you are having sunflower seeds for a snack and that they spill. The seeds fall onto gravel where they are hard to see. How could you separate this mixture of seeds and gravel? Just scoop up the seeds and gravel and drop them into a bowl of water. The pieces of rock or gravel will sink. The sunflower seeds will float. Why do the seeds float and the bits of rock sink? Some might say it's because the rocks are heavier than the sunflower seeds, but that wouldn't be true. Think about this. A piece of gravel on one side of a balance and a seed on the other side have the same mass. Each has a mass of exactly 
0.1 or one-tenth of a gram. If we drop these two objects in water, the seed will float and the rock will sink. Why? Because the volumes are different. The two objects have the same mass, but the mass is more concentrated in the piece of rock. The rock is more dense than the seed. Density is the same amount of mass compared to the volume. Imagine that we can scrunch both objects into perfect spheres. The mass will still be the same, but now we can compare the volumes. So if you take a look at the picture, it shows the rock or the piece of gravel at one-tenth of a gram and the sunflower seed squished into a sphere, and that is also at one-tenth of a gram. The rock has the same mass as the sunflower seed, but in a smaller volume, so the rock is more dense. But why does the rock sink and the seed float? Look at the same mass of water. So there's water right in the middle, so they all weigh one-tenth of a gram. Compare the rock and sunflower seed spheres to an equal mass of water. The volume of the water is larger than the volume of the rock, but smaller than the volume of the sunflower seed. The rock is more dense than the water, so it sinks. The sunflower seed is less dense than the water, so it floats. Water density. Why does warm water form a layer on top of room temperature water? Water particles move faster than when water gets hot. Particles push one another farther apart. The water expands. When water expands, the mass stays the same, but the volume increases. So what happens to the density? Look at the glass of layered water. Which is the hot water? Which is the cold water? How do you know?